be voted on in the House today. Joining us now, Congressman uh, Bob Goodlatte of Virginia, and it's good of you to be here. And I should say that when I said uh, you've been uh, proposing a balanced budget amendment uh, from, since your first day, that goes all the way back to 1993. Uh, you, you, you've got to be out, at least in part, I would think, Congressman, astonished that uh, we are closer now to actually achieving a balanced budget than we have ever been in the country's history. Well, Lou, this is very uh, encouraging because we haven't voted on a balanced budget amendment in the House in 15 years. Right. And the last time we did, it passed with bipartisan support and failed in the Senate by one vote. So uh, the fact that we're bringing this to the front and center uh, is because the American people want it and they understand it, too. Well, in the, when, I, when I'm talking about the history, I'm talking about the history of the course of the last decade since 1999. Uh, we've had a, a, a balanced budget, even a surplus of $125 billion. But to, to actually see this thing moving forward here, uh, what is it being called, the new amended uh, Boehner plan that is now the House plan, uh, cap, uh, cut cap and balance light, you've got to be encouraged. We are encouraged, and it's because we know that uh, with regard to cutting spending and leading to a balanced budget, which I think then should be encapsulated in a requirement that future Congresses always balance the budget, except in times of national emergency, is what the American people want. And that's, you know, they don't understand a lot of the negotiations, the machinations going on here, but they do understand the requirement that people live within their means, and that's what a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution does. Yeah, and what is your take on, uh, on, the, on the risk, the political risk that the Senate is now taking? 22 Republicans voted against uh, the Boehner proposal uh, with a balanced budget amendment attached now uh, uh, for the purpose of getting it uh, approved by the House. But the political risk now for Senate Majority Leader uh, Harry Reid, uh, for the Democratic leadership in the Senate, for this president who's already moved himself to the sidelines of the very debate uh, that he should be at the forefront of. I mean, what are the risks in your, in your judgment? Well, obviously, uh, the risk is that the American people will reject this. And I was pleased to hear you say just a few minutes ago about the bond rating. The, you know, the real risk with bond ratings is if we don't do this, Absolutely. Uh, that's when... Uh, that's when Moody's and Standard and & Poor's and others step in and say, you are headed toward Greece, you are headed toward a cliff, uh, and they want to see uh, something concrete out of this Congress. And I can't think of anything more solid than trillions of dollars in cuts in spending tied to a requirement that the House and the Senate, for the first time ever, send to the states a balanced budget amendment for ratification. Yeah, and, and it is uh, the politicization of Standard and Poor's and Moody's, but in particular Moody's on this issue, talking about a downgrade in the midst of the first responsible action since 1999 on the budget. I, I mean, it's breathtaking in its uh, absurdity, uh, its partisanship, and their retreat from that position today is precisely what I've been predicting on this broadcast for a month now. I, I, are there, do you well, think, uh, what's your reaction? Well, my reaction is that uh, they're backing away because they see that the Congress uh, is serious about this. And uh, if that was done to leverage some decision other than doing the right thing, which is to go forward with uh, a substantial series of, of spending cuts, then shame on them. Uh, but if they're backing away because they know we're doing the right thing and our rating should remain sound because we're getting ahead of the curve and we're going to do the right thing and make the spending cuts that are necessary, then that's where we need to be and that's where the rating agencies need to be. And the rating agencies right now need to be in the office of the uh, Senate Majority Leader, Harry Reid, because he apparently needs a good talking to. Congressman, we appreciate you being with us and congratulations on moving ahead. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lou. The Senate Majority.